Okay. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rosin Dienkov, and today we're talking about how we created a uh, kitchen demo, the simulation of it, using OpenRave. And this is my conj name, if you're curious. You know. Okay. <coughs> cool. So the challenge here was, you know, we have um, a dishwasher with uh, dishes in the sink, and we needed to uh, pick, the, pick these dishes up and put them in the dishwasher. And we needed to create a demo, autonomous demo for this, where the, ob where the robot considers grasping, collision detection, and, and everything else, any type of other physics. And eventually our plan was to put this on the real robot. So we first did a case study about whether this is possible with OpenRave and how long it would take to do with OpenRave. And the result was that in, we talked about this in the paper, in nine hours, uh, we were able to achieve this. So in nine hours, we were able to uh, go from just a robot model and CAD models here to an autonomous demo where you can put any dish, any cup, any object in here, and it will put them uh, safely here. So obviously this does collision avoidance, it does grasp, stable grasp generation manipulation planning. Uh, it uses analytical inverse kinematics, so I'll talk about that. And finally, uh, there's some physics in the end. We talk about it in the paper, but I won't have any time to go over in this discussion. <laughs> so what is OpenRave? I get that, I get asked that a lot. And uh, in my opinion, although it has a nice graphical user interface and yeah, it can move real robots and do things, it's actually uh, mostly concerned about planning and inverse kinematics. That's what OpenRave is. It is a robotics automation virtual environment to do manipulation planning, maybe use sensors, do some type of sensor visibility planning. There's about 10 different types of inverse kinematics, not just your 6D you know, position or orientation, but also look at inverse kinematics, uh, three dimension translation inverse kinematics, five dimension inverse kinematics. And it does interesting workspace analyses. For example, um, where should the robot go in order for its hand to be somewhere? You know, which is the inverse inverse kinematics problem. This is which, but it's not forward kinematics. Um, so here is basically, just for the simple demo, the, you c the components that uh, made it possible. And up at the top we have the collider file formats, we talked about it in the last session, which defines the CAD models, but also defines these parts about the robot, where the manipulator is, where the joints of the fingers are, etc., how they close. Very rough information, but it's enough information to allow us to um, really annotate and use the robot for planning afterwards. After that, we generate the necessary inverse kinematics for it. These are greatly dependent on the task, and they change per robot depending on how much joints it has. Um, and this is the analytical IK generation. We generate C++ files for these. Then we generate grasp sets using any number of known grasp generation techniques, and we store these in a set. Then we uh, create these, you could say, samplers in the actual real world, which given uh, the where the current robot is and given where the object is, we want the robot to pick up the object and place it somewhere. And finally, these, because these samplers generate configurations for the robot, we, everything is combined in this manipulation planning, <coughs> which is RT, uh, the rapidly, <coughs> randomly rapidly exploring random trees, probabilistic world maps, constraints, collision checking, etc. So this is what, oops, the IK generation would look like when you use OpenRave. Uh, this right now has seven joints. It has one translational joint here. And the IK allows you to explore all the space, all the free space, given a particular hand location. And this is how you would actually generate it. You would call this OpenRave pipe program with database inverse kinematics. You would specify your robot. You would specify which manipulator you want it to have. Dual arm robots will have more than one manipulator. Whether you want to have the torso or not in that chain is also up to you. And then you specify a type of IK type, which is transform 60 in this case. 
and finally, if, uh, because this was six D and you have seven joints, you have a free joint somewhere. And you, you can specify that here also. And then you get a demo like this. So this here is actually a generated C++ file. We'll talk about that later. Then we move on to the graph set generation, where, again, it's another database, but this time it's grasping. We specify a robot, we specify our target object, we specify the manipulator we want to do grasping with, and finally other parameters about uh, this. Now you'll notice here that sometimes these graphs are not good. Um, in order, in OpenRF, the way we handle this is we add this grasping noise here, which simulates you know, the, the jitter of the object and just to make sure, if the object is offset by even by one centimeter, we'll be able to grasp it robustly. So the videos you saw actually didn't have this parameter because these grasp generation sets take a long time. But uh, for anybody using it on real robots, this is recommended. So now we have a grasp set generation. We have our IK. So then we go on to our configuration samplers. Given the current scene, we want to figure out where all poses of the robot are that grasp this, uh, that grasp the object. And in fact, these are the goal configurations that we'll be inserting into our planner. And in Python, this is the OpenRavePy databases grasping, grasping model compute valid grasps function that will do this magic for you. And so now that we have a sampling function now with uh, the current goal configurations, uh, the c current configuration of the initial scene, we now have to add goal configurations of where the robot, uh, the, the where the target object should be placed. And here is the same exact thing. Once for every single goal configuration, we sample uh, several grasp set, several configurations of the actual robot grasping the object. And once we have the sampler, now we combine the two samplers. We have the initial grasp sampler, the goal sampler. We sample both, make sure that grasp sets are valid on uh, w one grasp can achieve both the initial conditions and the goal conditions. And then we just plan. It's simple. And it takes nine hours. Uh, this is our, some other robots, just in simulation. Uh, you know, you just, we just put the robot and scene model. Just insert the scene model. No other parameters tweaking. And you get this motion out for any object you want. Now, uh, yeah, here the hand limits were a little bit. The model was wrong, actually, not that open rate was wrong. So what happens is when you have a you know, six-joint robot or a seven-joint robot, it's easy to do grasp planning. However, it's really difficult when you have five joints. And in fact, you'll see in industrial robots or the Katana arm and other, you know, the, the latest KUKA U-bot has only five joints. And, but we still want to do grasp planning. So that's why in OpenRave we've developed this 5D inverse kinematics function, which is specify the translation and the direction. And using grasp sets again and 5D IK, you can actually do grasp planning now with a robot with just five joints. Right? No, nothing, no parameters to be tweaked, nothing. Just insert the robot. So again, here is the very simple architecture for this particular demo. OpenRave is a little bit more than that. If, uh, if you guys have no, um, the biggest thing here, the biggest, uh, I would say, feature in OpenRave that you guys should, you know, maybe get out of this presentation is the inverse kinematics part. And uh, this, there's this program called IKFast, which generates uh, C++ stable code for the actual IK, and it runs in six microseconds. And it works for any robot that we've tested. Maybe there's robots that doesn't work for, but um, if there is, please uh, tell us. It also handles degenerate cases. For example, aligning axes, divide by zero conditions, etc. In the end, you get very huge C++ files, maybe 10,000 lines. But they compile down something small and reasonable that runs fast. Um, so please use OpenRave. <laughs> It's, uh, I, we've tried to make it as simple as possible for users to use. There's currently a community. Um, the mailing list, there's about 200 uh, people subscribed to it. 
and it's uh, really great and hopefully people are very responsive on it <laughs> okay um, thank you any questions yes uh, so I wonder if you are